Yo, what is going on y'all? I'm Cavell Anderson and we are back with another video, man. And this one is going to be a very special one because we are going to be talking about Ecomi and we're also going to be talking um, about Safe Moon a little bit. But we're going to be going over the topic of is Safe Moon a scam, giving a lot of information and things like that. And I'm here with my homie Soul Bash and he's going to help us out um, understanding Safe Moon a little bit better as well. So be sure to subscribe to um, Soul Bash. His channel is going to be linked down below in the description. So you can check him out. But um yeah, I mean say what's up, homie. Introduce yourself. It was good guys. I'm Soul Bash. Uh you know, been homies for what, about five, six years now almost? Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. We've been been friends for quite a while. You know, exchange information and kinda of help each other out. And I've I've noticed Vel on the Comey for quite a while now. And I've been mining and doing this stuff in the background for the past almost six seven months and like just trying to educate myself on the coins itself and uh he come to me and asked me about safe moon today and wanted some of my input you know just to see what he thinks and kind of compare it with the comey maybe just to get an idea of like what the project is actually about yeah exactly and um i definitely did want to deep dive this and i know that he um, so bad he's actually an investor in safe moon along with some of my other friends So people have been telling me about it for a while, but I really do want to um, I looked at it for myself and I know that there was mixed reviews So if you're from the safe moon community and you saw the toxicity and some of my last videos towards the project I definitely want to apologize on behalf of the Ecomi community because this is not a community that's hateful a lot of people are just very very passionate about Omi so they can't see outside of that project. Me, I'm, I like to educate myself on multiple different projects. I like to understand multiple different things because understanding one thing can change your beliefs and your views of another. And I feel like you get a bigger picture when you're more knowledgeable about multiple things instead of just zoning in on one. So um, that that's what I like to do to make me a better investor. So yeah, hopefully nobody takes it offensive or anything like that. Um, and... One thing that I do want to say is looking at this project, I think that there is definitely short term room for growth. I believe that this project is going to go up in value. When you look on the exchanges, you look at the market cap and things like that, it has a it has a huge amount of holders already. And also, it has not been listed on some of the well, a lot of the biggest exchanges in the world. It's not listed everywhere already, which means as soon as it starts getting listed on these places, that's going to be that's going to bring more and more boosts to the token in the short term. Now, as far as the long term, I can't speak to that. That's why we have so bad here to give us some of his viewpoints and things like that. But um yeah, so before we jump into actual safe moon, I do want to talk about Ecomi. If you're new to the Ecomi community, what this project is is it's the leading NFT project when it comes to licensing. It it's like part of his team is some licensors who's been in the industry for a long time. You may have heard of Pokemon, you may have heard of Hello Kitty, you may have heard of all these giant names. And the guy who actually helped make these things possible, make make like Pokemon become big, Hello Kitty become big, and stuff like that, he's he's in charge of the marketing for this um or the licensing for this project. So if you look at their whole team, the entire team is impressive. It's, it's created by a guy named David Yu. Um, Daniel Crothers. Um, we also have Alfred Kahn. That was the guy I was referring to about the licensing. So there's a lot of great people in this project. So you all might definitely want to check this out and educate yourself a little bit more on on Ecomi as well. It's definitely not unrealistic to see Omi hitting a dollar in the future. And right now, it's very very affordable. So if you check out Omi and look at the price point, it is not unrealistic to see this hit a dollar once you really learn everything about the project. So. That's, this could be an interesting investment for those of you interested in checking that out. But let's get into Safe Moon. Is it a scam? Bash, what do you think about people calling it a scam? I think it's just people that are used to seeing red flags, like, you know, large supply amounts, you know, large wallets that they don't understand what's happening with. It, for this instance with Safe Moon, it's going to be the burn wallet where all of the transactions from that 5% that are getting burnt are getting sent to that yeah. people don't understand that they may look up the blockchain for it and or the accounts and they'll see you know this account has like 41 42 percent of the overall tokens well yes it does have that many tokens but that is a pretty much a black hole wallet that is the burn wallet there's no way to access that wallet you know it's 
once it gets sent to that, it can never be recovered again. Uh, so that's one of them that people kind of bring up. Like there's, you know, they would say there's a 41% holder where in reality, we, there are what they call well, well trackers on the Reddit website. Uh, and they do them generally every day. And we've gotten down to, there's, let's see. I wonder if it'll give me some information on that. No, but it will say there's less than a hundred actual whales in this community left. And over the past months, they've kind of lost down on their overall holdings. Um, and this is kind of overall, like right here, well movement to, uh, this was from yesterday. This was put out about 12 hours ago. So minus 230.8 billion coins. So the whales from safe moon, they dropped 230 billion coins over one day. Uh, what does that mean? They may have got rid of reflections or they just may be selling off something that they're holding uh, from the original bag. But this is just like a full informational like chart. Stuff like this gets put up all the time on Reddit. Uh, and I think Reddit is one of the best ways that you can educate yourself about a coin, especially if they have a good community going. Like, for instance, their Reddit, there's, I believe, 250,000. Yeah, 200, 250,000 people just on their Reddit. So... It's a huge source of information, uh, just like this right here. Uh, if you know what uh, encryption is, 15,000 bit encryption is insane. And uh, that's what their wallet is gonna have. And uh, you're gonna ask like maybe what the wallet is. It's just one of the products they have coming out. It's actually the beta for it starts in like two days. Uh, so it's gonna be built and integrated with Simplex, which Simplex is an onboarding uh, fiat on and off ramp for cryptocurrency. So basically what they do is they take the fiat currencies from all over the world and they convert it into whatever cryptocurrency you need. And that is what it's going to be connected with SafeMoon. Uh, for example, crypto.com has the very similar thing. Uh, you pretty much have a debit card. And let's see, I have an article about it right here. It tells you a little bit kind of what's happened in the past days some like current future catalysts for safe moon uh, pretty much every sunday safe moon the ceo and the coo two people that have doxxed themselves fully completely like these are one of them is a military person so their background is fully out there you know you can do as much research on these people as you want to you they're not hiding from anyone uh that's one clue for me to say that you know it's not really a scam because in this type of space, this is billions of dollars we're talking about. If something happens to this money from millions of people, that person is going to be in a lot of danger. Like it's happened before. Like this crypto is pretty wild. But this coin was launched on March the 8th. So March, April, May, June. This coin is barely over four months old. In four months, they've accumulated three to four million holders. Now, They've only tracked us, I think it's like a little over 2.5 million or something like that, but they're only looking at these right here, which are the exchanges that do have their tokenomics built into it because their tokenomics, they have to be integrated onto this for it to actually work. So you're able to see those reflections and the burns happening correctly. And it's, uh, it's a lot of backend work for them to do, but pancake swap, MXC, Bitmart, uh, Bit BNS and Biki English, which is L Bank, these are the ones that have the actual reflections built in. Uh, as you can see, like Bitmart, they do them monthly. Uh, MXC does them daily, and Pancake Swap is real time. So, like uh, Trust Wallet, for instance, uh, you, I can pull up my Trust Wallet right now, and I can look at my Safe Moon account, and I can see I have so many in there. I can wait a few seconds, and I can refresh it, and my balance just went up. So it's in real time. I see my, I literally see my investment growing in real time. Uh, and that's kind of the idea with SafeMoon. It's not a pump and dump coin as people would like to think it is because when you initially jump in, you're getting 10% taken off the top. And that's with anything. That's if you're buying, you're selling, or transacting it. Unless you're going to be using the, the Simplex card that they have coming up. Uh, what that'll do is pretty much right here. It says, uh, Save Moon Wallet Card will be Apple Pay, Chip, and PIN, and contactless, tappable, compatible. 
There will not be a 10% transaction fee when using the SafeMoon wallet card. Only standard card transaction fees will apply, which is roughly like in between 1.5% to 3% generally for transactions, just like if you went to the store and you were to buy something with your debit card. Yeah. Um, other than that, I mean, they've locked away $250 million in LP for four years. Uh, their tokenomics, it's the first of any kind. So that's why people are going to say, you know, hey, this is odd because it's the first of anything. First of anything that ever comes out, what are people going to say? What was bit people saying about Bitcoin, you know, 10 years ago? It's a scam. Obviously, it was not a scam. It's still valued at over $35,000 today. So, I mean, if you bought in back then, you've got quite a bit of money now. Uh, they have actual offices. We've done in, uh, India COVID relief donations. And so far, they burnt 418 trillion tokens, which is almost half of the circulating. Actually, that's over half of the circulating supply that was left after the initial uh I believe it was 233,000 that they burnt, I believe. So we're not quite down to half, but it's getting pretty close. So over time, obviously, there's going to be less coins. The value of that coin is going to increase over time. And you're talking like it's not listed on any major, uh, any crazy or major exchange. And we were just looking at this a while ago. They posted this, uh, I believe it was like March. No, it was May the 27th. They had a list. It would, let's see if we can find it right here. Right here. A to-do list. These are exchanges that they do want to get on, but it's going to take time. These are things that don't happen overnight. And as y'all know in the Comey market, like, yes, you know, you could have a big jump overnight, but huge projects, projects with this type of dedication, the the potential they have in the future, they do take time. And it's not something that you just throw together overnight, especially when you have millions and billions of dollars on the line from millions of different people. Yeah. So Coinbase, Binance, Kraken, Crypto.com, those are, you know, those are probably top five exchanges that they're aiming for. And, you know, you looked at them yesterday, they had, you know, a good dozen or so that they are on, but they're not really anything major. So it's still a little bit harder to acquire this token. So when it does become easier... For instance, they're working on like a, a buy now button right here. And this is going to be through Simplex. So you'll be able to literally straight just buy it with Fiat Cash. Uh, and what, two days we have the wallet coming up. So there's there's a lot of stuff on the horizon for this coin that is just about to, I'm going to say, make some big moves in the market for it because this is pretty much the first like physical thing from the coin that we're actually going to be testing yeah uh other than that they have you know partnership we already talked about and this last thing i haven't mentioned anything about this really to you yet they have a minecraft test bed called mooncraft and they're testing it and using this for their nft trading platform so that's like something super secret they're kind of working on in the background that we don't really know a lot about yet, but it's coming. They're, they have NFTs and all that stuff in the works as well. So, And they've also been uh, CERTIC audited. Uh, I know you looked at that yesterday as well. So if anybody needs to understand more of what CERTIC is, it's pretty much they give them all their code, let them go through it. If anything's safe, secure, unsafe, they'll they'll find it, you know? They pretty much sniff out anything that could be wrong or right with any coin. And that's what they do. And it's a constant, you know, they constantly are checking on it. So that CERTIC audit, it started out at like a low 80, I believe. And it's continued to grow, you know, over the past few weeks, ever since they were uh, audited. Um, other than that, you got any questions? Um, I guess, um, how long do you see this project lasting? Like, is, is this... Because me, obviously, I see the short-term potential. This, it could definitely boost it. A lot of this stuff, if it comes through, it could boost it some more. So how long do you think this project is going to be around? Is this just like a, a couple-year thing, five-year thing? Do you think it'll make it to 10? Like, how? What's your timelines on this as far as how long it'll last? This is a 100% long-term project. I don't, I don't see it ever going away because... At, at the rate, yes, they do burn their tokens, but at some point, they're going to have to stop. 
Now, a couple of numbers I've heard are they want to stop at like 25 trillion and 100 million. So 100 million is crazy ridiculous because, you know, they have to have faith in a lot of people selling off these coins or burning them for that to happen. But in the end, you know, it's not going to go away because they have the wallet. They're working on an exchange. They have a hardware wallet that they're working on. And they have the NFT stuff working on. So there's a lot of things going to be happening in the future with this uh, coin itself and the implementations and the things that can happen with it. So the exchange for one is going to be huge. Uh, I don't know if you saw that when I was scrolling through Twitter earlier, but they just started to put this up here yesterday. So the 15th is when this comes out, the Safe Moon wallet. And what do you see on their art that they put out for it? See Dogecoin, Cardano, and Bitcoin. Bitcoin, yeah, they got. Uh, and then, I mean, yeah, that looks nice. It looks nice. So these are their first three targets for kind of what they're going to be pairing Safe Moon with. I'm assuming with in their wallet when they when they have it going. Yeah. Uh, and beta, like I said, two days. So we'll find out very soon, within a couple of days, you know, what it holds, because I'm sure some people are gonna we're gonna be able to see actually what it looks like. And thereafter, we have the exchange, you know, that's probably end of year. So we're going to be maybe nine months, 10 months into a coin and hopefully have the exchange out. And at that rate, you're going to be competing with other exchanges. So not only being listed on Binance or Coinbase or some of these other cryptos.coms, but they're going to have their own stuff. And you'll be able to profit off of that exchange as well because... Their idea for their exchange is to have their tokenomics that the coin itself has. They want that built in to the entire exchange. So, for instance, if you send your ADA over to the SafeMoon exchange, what is going to happen is when someone buys and sells ADA on their platform, you're going to get a kickback off of that. Whether it be 1%, 2%, I, I don't know the numbers yet, but... Basically, what they were saying is these exchanges, they're making boatloads of money. And it's all from the fees. So basically what they're going to be doing is they're kind of just going to be splitting the fees with you. And that's the incentive to get more people on. And you can look at it as pretty much a kind of a savings account for your crypto. Oh, wow. Yeah, I heard that. I heard something about that. And I thought that it was an interesting concept. It's like, but... One thing that I think is a concern for people is that this seems like they're just, they came out, they had a token that just blew up, and now they're trying to come in and try to make a wallet, then make an exchange, then make this, make that. How does something like this compete against projects that were in the works for years and designed to do, to do that? So how is that going to compete with an exchange that may have a similar type of format or idea? But they've been working on these exchanges for years. They've released these exchanges like, and how does it compete with a wallet, a, a, like a wallet that that has everything that this wallet intends to have? And it, so, is it only going to be Safe Moon fans using this? How do they grow outside of just the people who have Safe Moon and start getting some of this traffic from other places? Like, what's the growth strategy you feel like in in that regard? Uh, as far as growth strategy, I think it it went a little bit crazier than they expected. And I don't think it was just like uh, off the whim, you know, they just four months ago started a coin out of nowhere. I think this was well thought out, you know, uh, for instance, you know, these guys are in West Africa right now. They're working in the Gambia, which is a country in West Africa. And they're working with the ambassador there to pretty much make safe moon part of the currency for that region of the world. And, Basically, they're aiming to give people that don't have access to banking access to finance like that. So through crypto. Ooh. And they're literally like, who's going to be in a, in, a, in a country in West Africa out in public if they're doing something wrong? That's, that's another thing to me that uh, I believe it's not any type of scam or rug pull or anything like that because like... These people are out here in the real world. They're 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 out there doing real things, and you can physically see it. These none of them are hiding. So, 
it, it's nice to be able to see that because from from a little bit of research I've seen on Reddit from people talking and discussing these things, the CEO Jack, he was he was in the same place in the Gambia in 2018. So whatever he was doing there then could still have something to do with his, you know, the connections and the stuff that he's working on with Safe Moon today. So I don't think it's this is, you know, a coin that just popped up over the past four months and people just start dumping money into because it's viral. Uh, uh, I don't believe it's that. I believe there's a lot more thought and action behind it because you don't go from nothing to, you know, being on 12 plus exchanges, having your own wallet coming out, having your own exchange coming out, your partner with Simplex, Apple Pay, like th this stuff doesn't happen overnight, you know? Yeah. So that's why I believe this has been in the works for a lot longer than we physically can see it, you know? Yeah. Well, that um, that definitely is a lot of information. A lot was covered, I feel like. Um, in the comment section, you all, um, let us know if you have any more questions, concerns, um, or some other specifics that you all want addressed. I definitely want to hear more about this project. It was a lot of information here that I didn't know. I'm still going to continue to do my own due diligence and research and things like that. Um, but we will probably do this a little bit more and let us know if there's some projects that you want us to collab on because a lot of the stuff that you all suggest I know Soul Bash is already involved with some of these other cryptos and projects and, th and things as well so um, if you enjoyed this insight be sure to subscribe to this channel subscribe to Soul Bash's channel um, as always drop that thumbs up and yeah we're going to catch you all soon peace out y'all